Welcome to Behind the Play, a video and podcast product of The Hoop Show that explores the lives of Geelong players, past and present, and future in this case, um, as, as well as the off-field figures that are keeping us Geelong strong. My name is Paul James, and I have, today I have the great pleasure to introduce, as I said, future... Well, I don't know, it's, it's, it's this weird thing, we're kind of between seasons at the moment. New, upcoming, soon to be, I don't know. Kate Sermon, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. I reckon you'd probably say that I, I'm not, like, I am a Geelong player now, now, not right? new. So... I think once you start, you know, potentially getting paid, I think you start to become a player. Yeah, I think so, you're officially part of the line. Yeah, I think we're officially part, but no, I'll be heading down there on Thursday. So me and my other half are driving down. So Ooh, haven't seen the club yet, but I'm excited. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it was going to be one of those questions I was going to ask you mm. pretty early on in the piece. And I guess we, we can kind of dive into it now. I mean, you, you're coming across from, from Port, but you're based mm. up north still. Um, and then there's kind of been this weird sort of period for for all players in the AFLW where for the longest time, no one really quite knew when the season was going to start. Mm. I guess people were starting to narrow it down based on the fact that announcements weren't happening and weren't happening. It was just getting prolonged. But um, you've now finally got a date. But I guess what was it like for that period there where you've changed clubs, mm-hmm. but you're in this weird limbo spot where you don't know when the season's going to begin. So you don't know when pre-season begins, all those sorts of little factors. What's this kind of limbo period been like for you as you've as you've changed clubs? Ah, uh, look, it's been look playing. I came into the comp in 2020, so yeah. if you look oh, at yeah, 2020, <laughs> 2020 and beyond, there's been absolutely no certainty. So it's pretty normal not to Just know when we thing. start. Not like, we have no idea who like what we're doing pre-season wise. When we start, how many games? So look. The reality is it's just normal for us. So that never really bothered me too much. I think it's more with me living up on the coast, on the oh, like in Tweed, which is on the border of uh, Gold Coast and New yeah. South Wales. I think it was more of when I was going to sort myself to get down south. Um, so I ended up just picking a random date anyway, and it just so happened to be the right date. Pretty so I was pretty lucky you. there. Yeah, but no, look, as a women's you know athlete, you kind of just – you have to go with the flow because you really don't know much. And I'm pretty lucky. I have pretty flexible work. I'm a physio. So I just kind of, yeah, I just kind of take it as it comes and there's no point. You can't worry about anything. You can't change. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty crazy about it, to be honest. No, that's that's awesome. Now we'll cycle back to the fact that you, mm. you have joined the club and it's, it's going to mm. be fantastic to have you on board for, for season 2023. And um, I'd want to rewind to, I guess, a point before you're actually playing the game at the, at this level, and I guess mm-hmm. t- discuss a little bit when you kind of fell in love with footy in the first place. So, I mean, do you do you remember kind of some of the first games that you saw, um, like when you even first discovered the game? Was there kind of as it was we were talking kind of before the show, and kind of even some of the family mm-hmm. pressures on me, for example, with with family having played that <laughs> yeah. okay, you, you're into this thing straight away. Were there those sort of external pressures? What was it like, and how'd you first uh, come across the this amazing sport? Look. Obviously, being a, a, a girl, like I never really thought that there would be a professional league. So I never, I never grew up playing like in a in a team. What I did is that like when in I'm not sure if it's the same in other states, but you have term sport. So yep. what I would do is I'd play term sport footy. But even prior to that, I actually did Oz kick when I was little. So very nice. Yeah, out in the cold of Ballarat. Ballarat. So about at the back of uh, North Ballarat, um, and I used to just dominate absolutely dominate the boys even in through primary school when I was um I went to Black Hill primary school shout out Black Hill good good little school that one um I used to play um in the little comps with the boys as well so we used to go do inter-school comps um I think a lot of them actually thought I was a boy just with longer hair um but then when I got to high school it all kind of fell away and I just kept on playing basketball and then still loved footy um and that was the case at the time that the system really wasn't allowing for for female players to really have a pathway at that point? Yeah, man, there was absolutely nothing. Like there was – I never even thought about playing football. Obviously, you know, you dream when you're, you're, you're little, like kicking the footy around and stuff like that. But it never you, – you don't actually think it would ever happen. And um, Which, I, you know what, I wish I actually thought that that would be – it could happen, but I, I just didn't. So, But I understand um, where it comes from, the way, again, yeah. given the way that the system was. I, yeah. I think about my own experiences through juniors mm. and – and we had a couple of girls on the team, Emma and Lisa, shout out, um, who were amazing. And again, some of the very best players that we had on the team. Mm. And a time came where 
they just no longer could be on the team and I mean I can't even imagine what it'd been like for the two of them where all of a sudden like they're part of this team we were we were winning premierships together uh, I mean junior premierships but like you know, we were winning premierships yeah. together yeah. and it was it was awesome and they were so important to the to the team that we'd built and then all of a sudden they were just no longer allowed to play with us anymore um, and yeah. it didn't feel fair I can't even imagine again what it would have felt like for them but mm. felt unfair for us you know like as teammates going why, why do they like, what have they done wrong and yeah. the, the, the answer to that is absolutely nothing but the, yeah. the system was not there to allow the girls an opportunity to succeed in that way at the time yeah, one hundred percent. And I think, look, I, th- you know, looking back, I think we, you just accepted it. You never actually, you know, I definitely just accepted it, and then I moved on to a different sport. Um, and that's when you can kind of, if we look at now, like a lot of players transitioning from other sports because they actually did participate in footy when they were younger, but they never got the chance, so they moved on and played sport. Yep. Um, you know, at high levels in your different codes. So basketball, netball, soccer. Yeah. Whatever it might have to be, yeah. 100% like I would 100% hands down say I'm a better footballer than I ever was basketballer um you know because I played wasn't there. no there wasn't so and then I, I really I wish I'd picked it up earlier but I, I guess I don't want to think that way but um you know I'm 31 now so my career but a few more few more good years left I think um but I would have loved to have started a little bit earlier it would have been nice but I'm just grateful that I get the opportunity um but Geelong, if we talk about Geelong, because this is a Geelong yep. podcast, no, I've loved Geelong. Oh, I was, I've loved Geelong since I was little. Hey, like I knew the second – I had this little book. I'm not sure if you remember. Remember those little books? And at the back of it, it had the Geelong song on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know the ones. You had one of them. Yeah, I had one of them. And I'm pretty sure there was the second, like – the second layer of the Geelong song. Oh, yeah, the one you never hear. Oh, yeah. What's it called? I, um, I keep on wanting to jump I into sh- the I second... should, especially as like a host of a Geelong yeah. show. I should know it better than that. But it's, you never hear it, so it doesn't get retained. Yeah, 100%. So I remember that. And I also even had like a little Geelong. You might have even had this, the little Geelong CD. And I had... Oh, no. Oh, I had a little Geelong set. It had, it had like a remix of Geelong, I'm pretty sure. It had random songs. I might even have it somewhere. I probably... Who knows where it is, but I had... We let the old in, CD put on the Geelong Cats dance mix one day at training and... <laughs> oh, that'd be great. I mean, I mean everyone will have to try and find a CD player now. in the first place, but yeah. Well, I reckon it's probably on Spotify anyway. You could probably look anything up or even on YouTube, but I was a diehard. Like, I'd get angry when we weren't doing well. Like, I was that kid. Like, then I'd be, like, cheering, and it's quite funny, actually, now. Now that I know that I'm playing for Geelong... Um, and that's starting to come back. It's quite funny. Yeah, when like you have to kind of repress it for a little while when you've got the the heart attached to, in your case, Gold Coast or Port Adelaide. And like, these are my mm. teams. This is who I, who I play for and who I love. But yeah, there's there's always this thing I, you know, that I seem to hear about that just kind of gets buried deep a little bit. And 100%. If you somehow 100% get the buried. opportunity or maybe after you retire or whatever, you know, it starts to bubble back up again. Oh, yeah. It's definitely there. Um, definitely it's there. And What? It's in your blood. I think so. Well, I've had it since I was a little tackle. I'll actually, like, grab this photo. Um, Because I loved Geelong when, um, like, Ronnie Burns was playing. Um, Obviously, Ben Graham. And I've got a little photo here of, where's the thing? Very nice. Yeah, just shift it slightly more to your left. There it is. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, when when I was little, look at my little woolen jumper. (laughs) I remember those. (laughs) I reckon if you got that wet, I reckon um, reckon it'd smell nice. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no. um, Yeah, so I've avid Geelong supporter and um I even had like a little flag I had really cool and embo- embroidery top I don't know where all this stuff is I think I probably chucked it out but um still got the old school scarf with the old school um emblem on it which is pretty cool so go yeah, I mean I'd imagine some of those um those old woolen jumpers jumpers for example probably get a bit mm-hmm. moth-eaten and stuff over the years when you're trying yeah to I certainly remember I think digging like finding one of those for 15 years ago now and it was, mm. it was shot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was you know yeah 2007 sort of window so and it was well and truly dead at that point so and quite heavy and it was actually, it. yeah well I was actually even like even what we were chatting to, chatting before um before this was the I found this when I was going through um one of our rooms at home um was these they're like cards oh so very- we've got Stephen King here We've got that's another Stephen King. We've got ah uh, the old mate Ronnie Burns, legend. 
How good's that? I'm just oh, gonna say I'm gonna say Buddha future guest of the show. I'm gonna try and will all these into existence, but Buddha hockey. Very very yeah. <laughs> Whiskers. The curls. We've got Michael Mansfield. These are so yeah. What, I mean, these I are all players. Always... We're we're kind of a similar sort of age. So these are yeah. these are all like ultra familiar to me from the you know same sort of period yeah. of my life as you really. Lee Colbert. I thought he was real cute. Hey, back in the day, Lee Colbert. And then he jumped ship, right? And so you hated him at that point. Where did he go again? North. Ah, uh, yep. Um, yeah. Then you've got Brad Shaw, Tim McGrath, Liam Pickering, Paul Corrigan, Peter Riccardi. Son's playing now. Yeah, we had Oscar on the show a few months back, actually. Yep, Derek Hall. Yeah. Yes, there, there's the an old, there's an old name. Oh, the joke. <laughs> yeah, so pretty actually, cool. That, that hey. card looks that card looks familiar to me. The the, the cat's Joker yeah. one. I'm, I wonder if I don't know. I just somehow ended up with one at some point. Don't know what I was looking at, but like, got my hands on one anyway. What do you reckon? How much I've definitely seen that design for? before. Oh, I mean, if you if you manage to get yourself a full set, and I don't know if that's like no. I'm pretty sure it's a full set. Oh, I mean, it probably isn't. I don't know. Is it meant to be like a full deck of playing cards? I think I'm missing. No, I reckon it is. I mean, if, if that if that's the full set, look, I I don't know. I feel like there would be some cats fans out there that would go mad for it. Like it's not the sort of thing that you throw up on eBay because people probably aren't looking for it. It's probably no, not the sort of thing you throw no. up on your Facebook marketplaces. People aren't looking for it. But like if someone heard that you had that and you were looking offloaded, I reckon they'd 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 offload a fair bit. Yeah, no, they're they're wicked. I'd love to get them signed, but actually I met Stephen King recently. Well not recently, like probably the last six months. Because he's he's coaching, coaching at the um Coast. the Gold Coast. Yeah. Yeah, he he had some really good stuff to say at the cattery because I about the cattery because I spoke to him about it's a bit off topic to what we were talking about, no, but fine. I spoke to him. I'm like, how do you keep? Because obviously the Gold Coast is struggling a little bit to try and keep the the boys all together. And he's like, look, you can have a great environment, all of that, but the reality is, is to keep players, you need to win. Yeah, and that's and that's what they did. You build a winning culture. Yeah, exactly right. So I thought that was really interesting. But he's a real nice fellow. I was a little bit starstruck when I saw him, but I, I didn't tell him and that. Also, I told him I was a long supporter. Looking right up, yeah. he's a giant. Well, I'm used to it with Witsy. Witsy's oh, yeah, super yeah, tall. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm shorter than everyone, so and even over really... at Port, there's a few a few tall boys over there too. So yeah, yeah. We didn't interact a lot with the the men. There's a few boys that I met, like I met Aaliyah, Aaliyah, but not. I didn't meet a lot of them just because it was still COVID. So yeah, right. Of course. Um, and the club's pretty like I was at, at Gold Coast for a fair while. So um, and the cl- the way the club's set up, it's quite integrated. So yeah. So. Um, obviously, as, as we've as we touched on, based mm. in Ballarat during your, your young years, um, there's obviously the love of Geelong. How mm. did, at some point, despite having played the juniors and kind of gone away from mm. it, stuck with things like basketball, how did you come to realise? And obviously, the opportunity was there, but you weren't. It's not. It's not like you were there from season one of the AFLW. So, how did you come to realise? Okay, I, I either need to have a crack at this thing that. You know, I loved so much, but have just never been able to pursue. Like, how did you get to that point where, okay, I need to go back after footy again? Yeah, look, I, so I was in Queensland um, and I remember looking up like UQ um, because I was was, like doing physio at UQ and I remember looking it up and I was like, oh, I should go down. I was like, oh, no, 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 like I won't. And anyway, I think first season started to come about and my best mate, Tani Nesta, um, she played for Carlton. And I was like, oh, so I decided to go down and, and watch her. And after watching that, I think it was her second game, I was like, oh, crap, I've, I think I'm going to play you here. So I was in, I think, by that time. So I, I thought about playing and then a couple of years went by and then obviously it was that first year. I was actually living in Maroochydore. So I saw a um, – I was actually playing touch. So this is touch rugby yeah, league. Oh, yeah. Rugby. Yep. I'm, not, I'm not really good at it. Um, it's an interesting sport. I actually handballed once in that game. I handballed backwards. So what it's always been. <laughs> they stopped. Like the, the umpire was pretty cool with it. He was like, oh, yeah. So it, she went backwards. But, yeah, the, everyone else stopped. But it was all good. But anyway, there's a couple of little uh, girls, uh, not little girls, but there's twins that were playing in the opposite team. And I somehow saw a picture of them in a Marichal Ruse uniform so I actually just asked them and they said oh look we train these nights I said we start I think next week or something like that anyway I went down trained played in 
the twos the first game because I hadn't really trained. Um, Got to get the match fitness up and all that. Yeah, it's actually quite funny though because I didn't realise, but that game, it was the same game that – so Taylor Harris was actually playing in that game and so was Ellie Anderson. Um, I had no idea um, because they used to be – I think they used to play for Aspley as juniors and they didn't have a senior side um, like a once. And anyway, um, yeah, so I played that game, got put down back, and I was like, I've never played back my whole life. And I was like, thank God I paid back because the ball spent all the ball all All the time time down there. So I was stoked. Um, But, yeah, so that's when I just decided and I really loved it. And then the next week I was in in the ones and then it kind of went from there. So I think it was about – Yeah, so it was about 26 um, when I started actually playing football. Um, and then just from there and ended up on the Gold Coast. and Yeah, so so <laughs> yeah. I guess how did that – because there's rediscovering the game, there's kind of mm. getting yourself back in, you know, getting that, that touch for the ball mm-hmm. again and, and all, all those kind of very natural things that come once you've been playing the game for a while again. But um, once once all those start to come to play, how did it then transition from playing in the seconds and you know having a great time and mm-hmm. spending a lot of time uh, getting your hands on the ball because yeah. in the back line all the time to mm-hmm. all of a sudden – making that step towards AFLW level. I mean, Gold Coast were coming into the comp at the time that you joined, if I'm, yep. if I'm right. Yep. Um, how did how did that conversation begin and eventually end up with you being picked up by the club? Yeah, so I, I think I was in my very first season um, and I did pretty well, but I, what we trained Tuesday, Thursdays and played on the weekend, like I would go – like I really enjoyed it and I'd still put 100% in, but I'd go yeah. surfing on the Saturday before we'd play and stuff like that. So I didn't really – I never really thought about the next level. Like I was just playing and um, initially Brizzy reached out um, about playing in like a winter series, yep. um, which was done I, I think the year before Gold Coast was coming in or maybe even the year – no, it was – so they did the winter series two years. So the first year of the winter series, this is two years before the Suns were coming in. Yeah, okay. Um, and Brizzy spoke to me about potentially playing um, in that, but they never kind of followed through. Um, and, yeah, anyway, I was like, okay, like it didn't really matter. And then the last game kind of came and Gold Coast reached out and said, hey, would you want to come down and, and train? And Because we've had a few girls that have been sick. Um, we can't guarantee that you'll play. It's just we just, you know, we just want you to come have a look. And anyway, I trained, trained pretty well and then, I got a call the, the I think that'd be the next day, and they said, oh, look, we really, really like you, but the girls have passed their tests, they're, they're playing, but we'd like to invite you down to Metricon and watch the game in the box. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, That's no pretty problem. cool experience, if nothing else. Yeah, oh, wicked experience. I was stoked. Um, I met a, a, a fair few of the girls anyway. I watched that. I was like, okay, I was – this is, this is pretty cool. I was like, oh, maybe I want to do this. Anyway, went back to the Sunshine Coast, which is two and a half hours from the Gold Coast. Yeah, it's a fair haul. And I was, yeah, and then I was just just dicking around, playing footy. And anyway, I get this um email from the head of women's footy saying, hey, would you like to join this summer series? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I'm assuming it's like 50 people. And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, I might get a backpack out of it. You know, I'd be stoked. Why not? Bit like, of fun, why, if nothing else. Yeah, you know, like it's quite funny. I actually, all I ever wanted was a backpack from from the whole experience. So, what was it about backpacks? I don't it's know. I just like them. Yeah, it's free. Love, That's love it. me some free stuff. Anyway, so I went down there, and there was only a few people. There's only maybe like ten or twelve, and I was like, oh. So I didn't realize it was a select few that did it. And this was a summer series just before. Um, they made then the selection of the team. So that's when I did really well in there, um, in that played, moved into the winter series, um, did really well in that, got the player of the series, then got picked up as a pre-selection or yeah, a, yeah. I don't know what that was called. And then yeah. that's how it happened. Yeah. I can't I remember. To, I, yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember what those, like the supplemental things. Yeah. Um, like a pre-signing, but like that whole time I was driving from Coolum on a, like once a week, sometimes twice a week, down to Metricon. So I was driving two and a half hours. It's a big commitment. To... Yeah, yeah. I wasn't getting paid or anything. I just really loved football and I love the camaraderie and, you know, I really enjoyed it. So got signed and then next minute I was heading down to the Gold Coast, which, you know, when you live on the sunny coast, you would never say, oh, I'm going to go live on the Gold Coast. 
So it's the Gold Coast. But when you actually move down there, there's some, there's a lot more to the Gold Coast than Surf's Paradise. Okay, cool. That's that's enlightening too, and we might have to dive into that a little bit because yeah, man. as someone it's who's beautiful. I think I've been up to surfers slash mm. that kind of region maybe only once or twice in my life and not for a particularly long period. So there, there's yeah. all the stereotypes and those sort of things. And you, you, if you're only there for a brief time, I think that's probably all you see. But clearly yeah, there's more 100%. to it. So actually, let's wait into some of that now. Like what, what was it about? Because obviously, you know, we even hear media will make their comments for example about players who move up to the gold coast whether it's for the men's or the women's and they mm. they kind of talk about the con- uh, you hear less of it these days but you know you hear mm. conversations about the concerns around the culture of the area and the party essential and all that sort of thing and is it going to impact the ability to actually focus on the game so what is it like up there it's amazing because you do, you do hear those uh, those little things being like teams, you know, team sports come to the Gold Coast to die. You always hear stuff like that. And look, there was data to kind of suggest it for a while. So. I mean, you look at it, you know, thinking like Titans and then, you know, yeah, and then the Suns haven't been as successful as what they would like. Um, no, it's beautiful. Like, I don't know. When they whole, say the whole thing about the partying and all that, like that's – it's just not true. Like, if anything, you're more – you're more motivated because it's nicer weather all the time. So if you, yeah. it's a lot easier to do your running sessions. You get up early. Like it's a more of a healthy lifestyle. I think when you're looking at, um, I guess fans and stuff like that, it's a it's a little bit trickier because Gold Coast is probably more of like a, an individual sport place. So you yeah. know you've got your you know your swimming, your Ironmans, all that like your athletics. All those summer based sports are more up here, but there's some solid athletes up here. So there's always a mixture of training between even like a lot of the the boys and the girls like train with other sports and they always, it's a lot easier to kind of mix sports. So like, I know sometimes you do running sessions, like there's a Gold Coast run group that I remember doing running with them and that you've got, you know, potentially people who, you know, compete in the Olympics, you know, you're not, you're obviously not in their group. over with them. Yeah, like it's a really, it's a really good vibe up here. Like I, it's definitely busy, busy, a little bit more north. I live more on the southern Gold Coast. So like pretty much like Cool and Gatta is pretty much where yep, I live. Yep, yep. So a lot cruisier down there. But um, it's when you're talking about the party lifestyle, I mean, there's still a lot of really good stuff to do. But, uh, you know, you got your pros and cons with that. But like there's a every, lot of. Like with everywhere, right? Exactly right. But it's a really good, it's an easy to stay active here really really easy so um yeah i don't know where it's coming from like maybe it's just because it's not a big sport here that maybe that they, they don't be, feel yeah, like the spotlights on them as much um but yeah i don't say that there's a disadvantage living on the gold coast if not it's an advantage yeah i mean i can certainly see what you're saying if nothing else about the weather too because that, that oh, was yeah. one of, that was one of the biggest things for me through my juniors mm. like i the motivation would wane when it was teeming down with rain or yeah. in my part of Victoria every now and then you'd see snow. Yeah. Like, no, I don't want to, no, I don't want to train in that. Do I have yeah. to? Like, and, and that kind of, yeah, I think that kind of eventually pushed me away as much as I, I loved a good torrential rain game from time to time. And you come out and you just a disgusting mess. It's you've just thrown yourself at everything and you've hit, you hit the skids multiple times. Like that was all lots of fun, but gee, I wouldn't want to do it all the time. And sometimes that's how it felt because you do it all week through training and then you go on match day and it's the same thing. Like that's That can wear on someone. So. Yeah, of course. I remember like playing school footy and my feet never warmed up the yeah. whole time. My feet were frozen. I mean, granted, I had some op shop footy boots, but they just never it warmed matter. up. It doesn't matter what you wear. Yeah, <laughs> but even I um, I, I actually, I, I, it's funny, I remember putting like the hairdryer in your shoe or even on your feet or even up the sleeve of your jumper just to warm yourself up. Um, I remember doing that, but it's quite funny. It's been a little bit chillier in the mornings and I've had to do some running sessions and I'm getting that little tickle in the throat. Yep. It's like when it starts to get that little bit colder and it's a little bit harder to breathe. So that'll, that'll be fun when I'm down there this weekend. More regularly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just get used to it, but you know, I'm obviously I've chosen to play my football elsewhere. So clearly it's not, it's not an issue for me. Well, yeah, exactly. And um, as we said, you've, you're from Ballarat, so you know a little bit about the conditions anyway. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of similarities still between the two. Yes, you might cop that ocean breeze a little bit more, but mm. but there's, there is something different about that Ballarat cold as well. So um, mm-hmm. both can be pretty bit, uh, bitter and you know a little bit about it. So you're at least not going to be surprised by, I guess, what, you, what you're going to cop when, once you arrive. Um, so a few seasons with the Gold Coast, though. Mm-hmm. 
And I guess what was that like? Because as you said, you weren't necessarily playing to make it to the top level. You were playing it because you enjoyed it. It was great to mm. reconnect with the game and, and all those sort of things. Suddenly this opportunity comes along and you, you're playing at the top level. I mean, what was that, what was that like when all of a sudden you, you know, game one comes along and strapping the boots up, you're putting on the Gold Coast jumper, about to run out. What was, what was all of that like for you in that, in that, first, that first game? Yeah, look, to be honest, like I'm I'm a real I know it's a real it's more of like a a kind of hip thing to say nowadays, but I was like super grateful. I and I would always everything I did, I was always like, "Whoa, how did I get here?" cuz I I never really knew like I never set expectations for myself. I was kind of yeah. always just getting to the next thing and then the next thing and I was like, "All of a sudden I'm I'm playing on Metropolitan Stadium." And I remember I do remember I think it was like it wasn't in the actual actually it might have been I remember running out we played Richmond a very first year this is game two this is the first game at home and I remember running out for the first ever home game and it was pretty cool and I'm in if you can't tell I like to talk and I um I just remember saying, like, like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, yeah, just we're chir- just chirping to the opposition and those sorts of things. I was like, well, no, this is in the warm-up. I'm chatting to oh. the girls. And I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, you know, and I think you've got to remember, and this is, you know, I've played, what, I think this might be my sixth season now. I think you lose that a little bit as you go on because it becomes the norm. Like, you know, yeah. I've got to remember that I started off just wanting the backpack. So, you know, I just. Any else is a bonus. Yeah, man. So I think you, you lose that a little bit. And um, I think I started to lose that, you know, toward the end of my uh, footy to, um, at the Gold Coast. So I think it was just time for something a little bit different. Um, but I'm super grateful. Like, you know, they gave me the opportunity and I had we had a lot of good times. Granted, we didn't win a lot, but um, I had some good t- times and made some real good friends. And, you know, the club, it's a good club. Well, um, I mean, the, obviously that that Richmond game you're talking about. I'm just you know, double checking all the stats as we go here. I mean, uh, that, who's nags? That, that that was a win. That was a win that who's day. Nags? And yeah, a couple couple goals for yourself there. Um, even, even the week prior, as you mentioned, kind of round one, we kind of quickly skipped around round one there. But it, I mean, it was a loss, but it was it was a one point loss to GWS. You had oh, it was torrential rain the week. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was eight to nine that game. So usually, Bro, usually the was... elements kick in at that point. I could not see. I could. The TV did not show actually how bad it was. I no, could the TVs not see. TVs make it look pretty good sometimes. And I could not see a thing. It was no good. But you know, it is just is what it is. But you know what? I went back there again the year after, and it happened again. I think it was the year after the year after. So I've only ever played at that oval with it pissing down rain. And then we, you know, we were talking before the game about snow one one day a year or two ago and all those sorts of things. Mm. Um, but mm. I mean, like you said, obviously, yeah, didn't hit the the winners board a huge number of times over the course of mm. the time at the Gold Coast. But like, I mean, that that year ended with a semi final, not yeah, not the greatest outcome in the semi final. But you know, you played finals in your first season, which mm. is, I, there's lots of players that will go their entire. I mean, unfortunately, there's some players that have played with some teams in the in the men's side in particular. Mm. That, you know, obviously, with that having been around longer now, um, that have played their entire careers and are, are still yet to have played finals. I think I think of someone like a Paddy Cripps, for example, um, who's still yeah. never done it, um, despite you know winning Brownlows and all those sorts of things. So. Um, you were able to do that in your very first season. Yes, it didn't end up well, but it is obviously one of those experiences that I'm sure you still look, you know, back on really fondly. The first time you got to step out there and and play that final, and um, I guess what was it like for yourself at that point, having again this this whirlwind into the competition, not setting any expectations for yourself, just chasing <laughs> a bag, but you you know you're getting in there, you're kicking as we say a couple goals, a yeah. uh, couple goals a game almost. Um, th- things are tracking really well. And then all of a sudden you're playing finals. Yeah, I think um, that it was a good, it was a really good first year. Like no one had expectations. Everyone I think had pinned us as being the wooden spooners because purely because of the boys. So like, yeah, right. I'll, you know, you, you take that a little bit to heart. Um, and, you know, we did, we did make finals by a bit of default, you know, because of COVID they, um, take it. And, you know, we were, I guess, in the easier easier pool. But um, it was quite funny. We'd actually just played West Coast. Um, and we'd, I think, we'd, yeah, we'd beaten West Coast. Yeah, and then five days, days later, five days later, we had to fly back to WA. So we went from WA 
come home and with that flight is so coming from the gold coast we can't fly out of the gold coast so we had to drive an hour in a bus to brisbane fly out of brisbane and then we come back we do the same thing so we had to do that again yeah right five days later so that didn't help us one but then that game was just you know Fremantle were great like they probably would have won the premiership that year but um we had a lot of things go wrong um in that game we had I think we had two concussions we had um Jordan Geordie Hickey got bitten by a bee on the bench what um yeah (laughs) just some random stuff happened and then some stuff some stuff that happened after the game um, that I'll that I'll keep in house, but yeah, okay, yeah right. it was a really weird situation. Just a strange then, day. Yeah, man, and we had to then go back to the hotel and we got locked in because of COVID. The rules. Yeah, it was just a bit strange, but you know, like we we we've played Frio a fair bit actually. We did, um, but it's just it was a it was a really cool experience, and yes, got to play finals, so that's a that's a win. So I don't think it'll be my last playing finals though. Um, the no, cats ho- are, hopefully there's more to come. I think I think there will be more to come. Positive. Um, and so, as we kind of touched on, a few seasons with the Sun. So we've got mm-hmm. uh, the twenty twenty season, twenty twenty one, and uh, I guess it was kind of a weird blur of the twenty twenty two season with kind of yep. two seasons taking place there. But um, the 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 first of the twenty twenty two seasons there as well, mm. um, building quite a streak of games played there too. I might add. Yeah, yeah. I haven't actually. I'm one lucky yet. enough that I haven't been been too injured. Touch wood, touch wood. Had, you know, I think I think it helps that I'm actually a physio. Um, I'm able to kind of diagnose a bit. Yeah, but I think I. I mean, it works a little bit. It's it's a positive and a negative, but I'm able to kind of understand the difference between if it feels bad or if it if it's something that I think I can push through or whether it's something okay. I need to hold back, here, pull back a bit. Um, but I'm lucky enough compared to like a lot of the girls, I've got a long training history before I started yeah. playing sport. Um, so I think that helps a lot. So I've been able to kind of build my body up and I haven't had to put the load through my body as much as what people my age have. Yeah. You know, there's some of the young girls, I bet you that play for cat that have played football longer than I have. So um, I think that that helps with that. But um, also moving more into a forward position, you just don't get it hit as much as what you do in the midfield. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that yeah, constant, a lot more running. constant combative thing, yeah. 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 The middle of the ground. Yeah, that's fair. Um, actually, I'll, I'll pick into the into the physio thing a little bit. Hmm. So you're obviously just talking about the the fact that you can kind of recognize. Now, you're, you're talking to someone who's not a physio. And yeah, I'm cool. sure most people listening, not physios. And any who are, congratulations, you're fantastic at what you do. <laughs> but um, when, when you're talking about, you know, those strains on the body and being able to feel like, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's, it's not guaranteed, but there's that hmm. backing of knowledge and understanding and education that you've gotten when you're experiencing these things, how do you know when you're at that safe point versus when you're potentially at risk of pushing a little bit too far? Yeah, I guess I guess it's hard to it's hard to really hundred percent know. You it would can't be different say from person to person. Yeah, right? but look, if you give I'll give you one example. Um, so there was a West Coast game. It was round two. Um, actually, after that, we all got COVID, which was quite funny. Um, but it was the game. It was a. It was a game where um, we came back in the last quarter and we kicked. I think we were down by maybe two or three goals in seven seven minutes to go, and we kicked. You kicked. I think you we kicked, kicked a couple goals yourself that day. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, in that last quarter, I think we kicked maybe five or six in seven minutes, which is really unheard of at the AFLW level. Um, because scoring is such an issue. But um, yeah. so before that game, I had a little bit of like left kind of calf pain and I was like, oh, and it was kind of like in like, well, she's more left hamstring pain. And I was like, oh, she was a bit off here. But I knew that it wasn't a hamstring. Like I knew it was more of a neural thing. It felt more like a neural pain, like that difference feeling. And then also just by doing particular modes, I knew I'm like, okay, this is, this is, this might hurt as I go to bend over, but. It's, not, it's actually not going to go on me. No. Like and it got better as it went on and then I never had any issues. So just little stuff like that, knowing that it's okay to, you know, and even if like tendon soreness, knowing not to push past tendon soreness, but I've been lucky enough. I haven't really had too many issues other than, you know, getting it. I've had a couple of head knocks, not, not yeah. bad, but I am, I am little. Um, so it's more, it's more in training. So they get hit in the head more than in games. I mean, have you had any of those moments where you have reflecting on or, I just I tried to bite off just a smidge too much here, or well not so much um, yet. 
back probably back in the day, maybe when I first started, like when you push, you know, when no one's telling you to come off when you get hit in the head or something like yeah. that. Um, yeah, probably probably early, early, early. But um, and then I'd go to work and work and realize it's not realize good it for you. And, yeah, but other than that, like no, I haven't haven't really. I've been pretty lucky to be honest. Like I've made it through all my pre seasons. I've been been really, really lucky. But I really just don't want to be jinxed now because I'm talking about no, it. No, no, Darren, there's lots. Of, uh, I've got a wooden desk here. I'm smashing all right, that for you. Make, make sure, sure you smash I'm, that. Yeah. So, and I'm sure everyone watching, listening, do the same thing. Find something wooden. Yeah, to look, yeah. look after Katie. Yeah. Um. So. What prompted the move from Gold Coast at this point? That's where you're based out of. You're still, you know, largely based out of there now. Mm. Obviously, the move is coming. But um, what prompted the the move to Port Adelaide? Um, I think I was just ready for a change. You know, like you know, when you start at a club, you only really get seen as that. So I think yeah. it sometimes it's nice to you know go experience something else. And you know, my my career is definitely you know it's only only relatively short, but it's you know. So I'm trying to kind of get the best of all worlds and, and try different things. So, you know, going from a non-AFL dominated state to an AFL dominated Lives state. Lives it, yeah. Yeah, it's just a really cool opportunity. And, you know, what Port had to, to offer in regards to facilities and, you know, the coaching and just even just the fact that they had a lot of women um, there was pretty cool. So um, it's just a cool opportunity. I just took it. Um yeah, I I probably didn't to be honest, I really didn't think too much about it. I was just like, oh yeah, my other half said it was okay, so I was like, all right, well, why not? And it. then I just left like not long after I left. So um probably should have thought about it a little bit more, but um you know, still enjoyed my time, a really cool experience. Um and you know, I'm sure made plenty of friends and all those sorts of things too. Yeah. Uh there's one particularly huge win there against Sydney, uh, 68 yeah. to 2. I just for for everyone watching listening, it's a, that's a real hiding. Um by any measure really so mm. um again i you know lots i mean s- stats are really solid there's like i mean you know you're putting out good numbers you're getting on hitting the scoreboard all those like it seemed you know really felt like you brought it just purely statistically if nothing else bringing a lot of what you were already doing well at gold coast over to port adelaide there so i guess as we now start to transition again we've, we've touched on this we are geelong mm. bias show so we'll start shifting towards the, uh, mm. the the geelong focus here outside of i mean did the the love of Geelong as a as, as a youngster play a little bit of a part in in moving again so soon, or like how did we get to a point where it made sense to shift in the space yeah. of a year after the Cats? Yeah, I think. Um, look, I think I played. Uh, I think fitness definitely played a bit of a role at probably not playing probably to my hundred percent potential, just because we we were a brand new side coming off another season. They didn't want to. Um, they they couldn't put as much load through the kids as what you'd ideally yeah. want. So they're probably a little bit unfit. So it wasn't really happy with that. But when we're looking at my ability to you know use the ball, um, I developed a lot in my ability to kick and my decision making, which. I was super stoked with it. And I think it's because I was playing with some pretty high caliber players. Yep. Um, even the, even the kids, like their skill level, like when you train and you play with good players, you get better. Um, so I was pretty, pretty happy with, with that. Obviously the team, I think underperformed. I think we were better or better than what we actually performed. So um, that was a bit disappointing. So, you know, I'm definitely sitting there going, okay, Port are going to be pretty good next year. Um, but for me, uh, you know, like I was saying before, I probably didn't really think about the move as much as what I probably should have. Yeah. Um, realizing that my my partner and everything are on the Gold Coast, and it's 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 pretty actually quite tricky to get to um, LA from the Gold Coast, and it's a twenty four hour drive. So looking at that logistically, and I don't actually know a lot of people in that. I do obviously know now, but I don't know a lot of people outside of football. So Victoria was a good option when I started thinking about it, that I've got a lot of support outside of football and my best friend just had a baby. I've got family in Ballarat, Geelong, Melbourne. I've got a lot of people and, you know, so I did start thinking, okay, like maybe I should, and I know it doesn't look that great, um, but um, I started thinking maybe I should, look at going to Victoria and that's when I was like okay that's when it really popped into my head and I was like well, I'm, I'm going to try and see if I can play for the Cats I was like because it's a tough one because teams are quite solidated so it's quite difficult to be like does the team need me like the reality well, I mean, is there's, there's they- list management and all those sort of things they're building towards a certain 
they may not make it. or whatever. So, yeah. And majority of teams need halfbacks or tall players. And I am not – I mean, I could play halfback, but I'm not a tall player. So, you know, the role that I play is relatively s- specific, but it's also a very underrated and and normally a position where they put a resting mid. Yep. So um, that's where I was like, oh, I don't know. And then just doing a bit of research watching the Cats games and, you know, knowing from watching in the second season is just the the group just seems – they seem like a team um, yep, yep. and they seem like no one's bigger than bigger than a team. And listening to a few of the interviews like with um, Meg Mack and just saying his, like I think it was coming into maybe round three or something, round four, and they were like, yeah, we just realised that if everyone plays their role, then that's when we get success. Um, and I think that's, that's huge to learn um, and that's what I'm really after. I'm after just a team that everyone's just going to do what's right for the team. Um, yeah, I mean, kind this- of- yeah, beautiful thing where obviously the 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 men's side has been so successful now for mm. what are we now twenty twenty three. So it's, you know it's been sixteen years since since the two thousand seven premiership. But of course, you know there's there's a lot of comments and you know I'd, I'd kind of stand by them. You know really this has been building since about two thousand four uh, as mm. some of those players start to come together. And so I mean you've you know you're talking about Stephen King before and the way he spoke mm. about the club and all those sorts of things. Like there's a culture that's been built, um, and I'm sure as the the women's team then got formed. I mean, that's naturally going to, to rub off there and, you know, probably serve as one of the core pillars of, okay, we know what it's like to be a successful club, so how can we look to try and replicate this cultural sort of approach and maybe not the games, maybe not necessarily the game style, mm. but even last season I watched them like, I can see more yeah. of what the men have been doing here in the women's team as well. A um, little bit more slingshot, a little bit get and go, all those sorts of, th- you know, kind of cliched sayings, but... Um, I could see tone shades of the men's game and approach starting to appear in the in the women's team, and they were starting to bank wins as well. And mm. it links in with you know things like what you're saying, you know, Meg saying that you know people are going in, they're just they're playing their role and they're playing it well. And mm. there's some stars on the team as well. And you combine all these things, and suddenly they become really competitive. And so yeah, naturally, it naturally seems like I mean, with all the other factors that we've discussed aside already in terms of being a Geelong support and whatnot. Mm becomes a very appealing prospect yeah for sure and having a good chat you know watching a bit of the footage i was saying before is that and realizing that potentially their forward half is where they were lacking yep. so you know if you line up all those things it's meant to be isn't it it was made for you <laughs> exactly right so um you know obviously had the had a chat with dan and it's probably nice for them having a player that wants to come to the yep. club too i think that's always a nice thing but having a chat to dan i was just you know, I thought it went really, really well, but I'm tr- I'm trying to learn in life that nothing's as good as it seems and nothing's as bad as it seems. Because um, I'm a person who gets pretty pretty excited pretty easily. So, um, yeah. So it's just you know that's I think it's just all meant to be. And you know, thinking about but you know having my own like locker and Guernsey and it's it's At the pretty. Club that it's, you supported when you were young, like it's huge. Yeah, man, it's pretty special. Like I went to that, I went to that oval when there was standing. Like, you used to stand, like, it's you don't even look anything like what I was like when I went there when I was younger. But, yeah, it's going to, you know what, I'm probably going to be, it sounds a bit lame, but I'm probably going to be a little bit emotional, I think. No, that's, that's um, totally fair. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it sounds lame, but it's you a bit of a one You stand on one side like, of that fence, you know, admiring yeah. the, I mean, again, you were holding up a whole bunch of the cards before, admiring a whole bunch of the mm. players that would come out there, and now you get to be that. Yeah, which is which is pretty strange, and you know, and there's some pretty solid colours. They're good colours. They go it's, with any well. colour boot. It's, it's great. Well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty. I just, just yeah, I, I can't even really put it to words. It's yeah, it's it's pretty cool, and it was quite funny. I had a good. I had a chat to my other half, um, and he said um, he always said to me, "If I was ever going to move from Gold Coast, I was allowed to go to Geelong." I just had to bypass to Port Adelaide to to get there. So you know, he's really stoked for me. Um, what was it about know, Geelong he, for him? Is it, is it all that well, history and those sorts of things? Or yeah, he knew I was a Geelong supporter. Like we've got this gnome. This um, I'm not sure if you've got one. Or if you've ever heard, I've got a little garden gnome that's a Geelong know, garden. It's about this size. Yeah, yeah it's a bit those. dishevelled at the moment. It was my mum. So um, I bit have that. Yeah, so it's kind of just gone with me, at, like from you know. When I left Victoria, it's kind of come with me, which is a bit random. Um, 
Yeah. Well, you you, again, you couldn't check that love of the cats quite at the door, despite everything that had happened, and that's that's fair enough. It's again, it's in the blood. Um, I was annoyed though. I came to the so when we played Gold Coast this season, I went and watched the game, and they lost. So oh, I was pretty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to go into the the rooms and everything, and, and I was and me being a hearty, oh me being a hearty supporter, I was like, I, I can't. Yeah, I was like, funny. they're zero and three. I can't go down there. Like. My first interaction soon. with the club. Yeah, so um, I'm heading down on Friday, so I'm hoping that we get the win to um, uh, get beat Richmond. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, we've, we've got to, we've got to beat the Tigers. Uh, which I mean, out, recording though. this in a vacuum, so we'll already know the result for for yeah. those who check this out in the future. But um, mm. yeah, I'd imagine that would have been a weird one. It was, I mean, it was a weird time as a cat supporter. Just this doesn't feel right. I mean, the first mm. the first two games, okay, quality opposition, obviously Collingwood and Carlton. Mm. You know, teams, especially the Pies, teams that we kind of expect to be somewhere near the top. The, mm. the Gold Coast one, they, they're building, of course, but it it didn't it didn't feel right, and it was a very different yeah. kind of loss too. But seemingly, maybe the reality check or the, yeah. the the moment that's kind of helped swing things around for us in in the week since. So, yeah, fe- yeah. feeling much better about things at the moment. And, uh, yeah, yeah, with watching you that game and being though. local soon. Be good to get down. Yeah, exactly right. Watching that game live, though, the Gold Coast Geelong game, Gold Coast played really well. Like, they just, when we want to kind of move the ball, they would just shift and they'd just yeah. carve that outlet on the out. So, if it looked like they were just dicking around with the ball, it was because Gold Coast were covering those outlets. Um, they, they just played really, really well and the cast just weren't ready. But that's 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 past. That's footy sometimes. And yeah, exactly that's, right. I mean, I don't know if we're scheduled to play them again later in the season, but hopefully that's not the the same result later on i mean they'll have to come down to geelong to do it anyway mm. but uh yeah hopefully the results are not the same so obviously yeah as as we speak you are days away from, yes. from hitting the road and coming down and there's obviously as, as you say there's kind of been some interactions with the club since right down to the mm. point where you would have popped into the rooms but you know mm-hmm. thought better of it in the end um so what have those communications kind of looked like at this point as you're still kind of interacting really from afar you know is there and again amidst all that Mm. Um, unsureness from everyone within the comp as to when the season was going to start, when was pre-season going to get going, all those sort of things. Is there Was there any sort of feedback from the club saying, okay, well, you're still up there on the coast. We maybe need you down by whatever date. But in the meantime, we'd love to see you trying to do X, Y, Z. Was there any of that sort of interaction or was it a little bit more hands-off? Oh, look, probably a bit of both. Um yeah, that, that looks so. I'm at, when I did have my meeting uh, with Dan, it was it was I made it very clear that I'm gonna do the preseason season. So and then I'd be coming back to the coast, and you know the classic Geelong, they're very supportive, yeah. um, and they you know and they trust that I can do all the right things. So to be honest, with all the the my running and stuff like that, they've kind of just. They haven't even watched from afar. They just kind of trust that I'm doing it and I, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I've reached out to the S and Cs and um, the running coaches and stuff like that. I've had a couple of chats with um, Dan, but to be honest, it's kind of we've got a long preseason. I haven't really done too much. We've had one one little meeting, just kind of going over you know the dates and stuff like that. But they they just said come when I want to come when you're ready um, when I'm ready. Um, but yeah, I just I was itching to get down. Um, I'm a pretty when I'm when I'm there, and the beautiful the beautiful thing about living away from my my partner is that when I'm there, I'm there. Um, and I know yeah, a lot of girls. In. Yeah, man. Like when you're here, like I even when I was playing on the Gold Coast, like you just I never saw him. Um, even in the off season, I didn't see him as much because I'd still be doing sessions with the group, or you'd yeah. be running with someone. Whereas now he runs with me in the off season. So um, there's a lot more quality time. So when I'm down there, I can I'm I'm there fully. Like I'm there for football. I'm still obviously working, but I'm there for footy, there for the girls, all of that. So you get 100% me, away. exactly right. And why wouldn't you? Like it's a cool opportunity. Like I'm very very lucky. So you've got yourself your spot, and you're ready to move in. And uh, I guess who are you? without wanting to throw shade at anyone else on the list. And I mm. do not want to put you in a position here because you are only just about to join, but is there anyone that you are most eager to start working alongside? Is it some of the other girls that are going to be in the forward line with you as well? And just like, okay, how can we get this dynamic going? Is there anyone that you've just watched from afar or, you know, played against mm. and gone, geez, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind playing with you. <laughs> to be honest, there's a heaps of them. Um, I've actually got a fun. There's a few girls that I've played on because I've played Geelong a fair few times 
for the Suns. Over the years, yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a few. I'm, I'm excited a few battles at training um, with, like, Chantal and oh, yeah. uh, G Ranks. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for a few battles um, and just making each other better. But um, I think as a, as a small forward, and I love the fall of the ball, you, you can't help but – you want to play with like Sheary and um, a spending a lot of more time in the midfield these days. In the, in the I BFL, know, I you? know. She, yeah, she better not get too comfortable there because I wouldn't mind getting to her feet. But then you've got you've got so many other good players down there that are that'll create a, a contest. Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm stoked to play with all of them. That that sounds really cliche, but that we've got a fantastic midfield. Um, so half of half the battle as a forward is even just getting the Supply. ball. And exactly right, because you can't control that's the toughest thing about being a forward is that you can't actually control when the ball's coming down that you, you don't get to choose. Yeah. You have to hold your shape and you've just gotta you've just got to do the team thing. Whereas in the back line of midfield you can at least drive it up there. Exactly right. So uh, knowing knowing that the group, I think there'll be a lot of supply in the forward line. It's just now um, figuring out how we work together as a group. Um, the usual my things, locking thing is, it in, mate, like keeping the contest yeah, local, and, and yeah, the will, sticks. my main thing is, is and I never understood this because you normally get some characters in the forward line. You know, yep. you, you know, like the classic key forward, just wanting to snap, turn a goal. You know, you always get that. But um, if you watch along, they definitely don't do that. If you watch the men's team, and I like to think the forward line is very much like the back line. You know, when the back line's just like everyone wants Go to be in the business. Line. They just, they, everyone just loves the back line. They usually get the best coach in the whole group. They're just, they're just like the the little team. And that's what I want the forward line to be like this little group that just works together. And when one person kicks a goal, it's our goal. Like, you know, so I, I think there's a, there's a lot of, um, there's a few more older heads, um, like Shelly and, um, who else is in the forward line? Parry, um, that they're, they've got a lot of experience. And I think, from what I've heard is that they're very much, you know, very team orientated. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. But there's, there's no harm in creating, I guess, like there was kind of that branding for the, uh, on the men's side, there was that branding for the defense there for a while, you know, calling it, well, actually I think it might even still be a thing where they were calling themselves the misfits. Maybe yeah. there's, maybe there's some little sort of joke thing you can kind of build out of the, out, whatever the, the dynamic ends up being between, between all the girls in the forward half. Yeah. But everyone always says that. The back line is always the tightest group and stuff. And I'm like, and everyone's like, oh, the forward's always the, the trouble or the forwards, you know. Like, ah. So I'm going to – hopefully we can create something different at, at the Cats. I think we're going to be working a lot on the forward half of like, a lot of forward craft. So I, mean, I, I guess I can see where the stereotypes kind of come from. I mean, yeah. the defenders have to kind of hold strong and, you know, fight them off and that sort of mm. thing, whereas, whereas the forwards, especially if, if things are humming along well, it can seem, it could, especially from the outside, it could seem a bit more like a party sometimes. Yeah, man. The best thing about it is if you stuff it up, it's still a while to get down the other end. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, we're, um, I think it's really important. I think last year they were the best at scoring off of a, um, when the ball came out of the 50, that's when we're more likely to score is come, when it comes back comes in back after in. that. Yeah, so it's just really important that forward pressure is super important, and I think it's a it's a key mark to my game. Along, yeah, along with just you know, I'm, I'm more of a goal assistant, not necessarily a goal kicker. Um, I wouldn't mind hitting um, the scoreboard a little bit more, but I would say that I'm more of a, a player that connects the the forward line to the 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 midfield to the forward line. Well, I mean, as you said, with Shiri doing what she does, assuming she's you know back playing a kind of key for like a key position in the forward line, who knows what opportunities could be there for you. Um, who knows yeah you know, picking up some of the some of the scraps that I mean she's a gun but she's not going to hold on to everything so there's going to be those opportunities there for you as uh, when the ball comes to ground and who knows what opportunities that, that unlocks for you and hey hopefully we see you hitting that scoreboard nice and often over the course of this this coming season there's nothing worse when you like you're in the best fall the ball position you're like yeah I'm right there and then they and mark then they hang on like, oh and you're like perfect you're gonna get it and you're like rolling on and then they mark it I mean it's great but like, oh. oh, I mean, it's great for the team, of course. But <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I've got to look exactly. at my bottom line too from time to time. Ha, nah, I'm very, very, very. <laughs> everything's very team orientated for me. So, no, and as it should. If I have to sit, if I have to, sit, to be on, this is going to sound like almost very close. But if I have to sit on the bench or I have to be in the in the crowd supporting, like I'm just grateful to be here, to be honest. So um, I'll do whatever the team wants, you know. But I'm I'm going to be definitely try my very best to 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 play each week, but. Um, it's, just do whatever's best for the team. Now, one thing I've got a 
pick your brain about before we kind of continue on from here? And it's not a team specific thing. It's it's a nickname. Yeah. Uh, where did it come from? Spud. So the nickname is Spud. It can go. You got Spud. You can call any. You can go through all the different names. I get Spudoodle, Potato, Spuddy, um, all different types. But um, How'd it when come I about? When, well, when I was little, I used to sit and um, like I'm talking like a baby. Um, I used to sit and stare at the TV. Oh yeah, okay. Get it? Couch yeah, potato. Couch potato. Yeah. So and then it just my dad coached me through sport and it just stuck. And then I went to you know I ended up yeah it's just weird it just stuck I don't even know how it even translated through to Queensland actually oh actually yeah I remember what happened so when I when I went down to Maroochydore Roots so that first training session I rocked up and there was someone I went to school with oh really yeah. so okay so yeah, the nickname was... gets mentioned once and then yeah, all of a sudden and then bang it stuck so look I'm I love it like I it's just a name that's been there for me for a very long time like my best mates back home like they don't. They don't actually know me as Kate at all, yeah. um, and I, I've definitely floated it with all the all the girls at foot, at footy because obviously there's a uh, another Kate, but footy's foot. You got to have a nickname at footy, and Spud's it. So, so um, I've got one that it. I want to throw past you that uh, Ben, a kind of key host, the guy who really is in charge of all all things the Hoop Show and and help facilitate this chat. He he put a nickname suggestion out there for me that he hoped that I would read out. I, I want to get you to rank it the score out of okay. 10 10 being right. fantastic one being trash i've got my own opinions i'll render them afterwards he's embracing uh, the terminator yeah okay a combination of terminators and you could go yeah. terminator from america but you can go there's a whole bunch of different ways you could kind of go there but uh what yeah what do you make of that one look you know like it's not original no is not, it? not the slightest you know, but you know what? I've actually never had any of that growing up. I think it's because I already had a nickname. But yeah, okay. yeah it's kind of like Sermonator, Shermanator, American Pie. Is that where you're referencing that one? Well, I mean, there? it could be he could be that. He could be going down more the Terminator sort of path. So there could yeah, be, there could yeah. be a few Look, different ways. He's not he's not actually clear in his message there. But um, when you're looking at the logistics of it, um, and the roll off the tongue, I reckon it, it goes all right. It's probably a good training um, but, nickname. Doesn't I don't think works when you're out on the field. Yeah, it'd be like these things need to be short and sharp. Terminator right? kicks a goal or something like it'd be just a you know something like that. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah uh, maybe like a four. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, so <laughs> cop that bet. Actually, Ben, I think I'm going to get to do that with every episode going forward. Now, just come up with a horrible Come on, nickname. Ben, we'll, we'll get, give we'll me get, yeah. Get people to get people to score them. Um, so that's that's his contribution to the show, and we'll speak nothing more of him. Um, <laughs> so. As we start to wind things down, um, I guess on behalf of myself, Cats fans, um, and of course, you know every, everyone at the club, like it's it's gonna be fantastic to have you on. Well, I guess you, we've discussed this already. You are on board now. Like the season hasn't begun, preseason hasn't begun, but you are a cat, um, and mm. it's it's gonna be fantastic to see you wearing the hoops over the course of the year. But to kind of draw back upon some of those experiences you had and we touched on some of those players of the the 90s and early 2000s Mm -hmm. and some favorites that we both share who in your eyes having you know watched the cats for quite some time now Mm -hmm. who who in your eyes would be the greatest cat of all time oh gary ablett jr that's fair yeah, like, do you not see him kick that goal on the weekend? Just on the weekend, yeah, he has not like, lost what the, anything. Like he did that at the Gold Coast, like, multiple times on the le- that left side. I remember exactly where that pocket is. Yeah, no, 100%, yeah, hands down. But he's, like, one of the greatest of all time. Like, you can't go yeah. past that. No, um, right. Yeah, and I love it because he's little. Like, I love all the little players. I'm a real... The little guys who make it big. Yeah, yeah, I just love it. Um, who else would I say? Like, I'm, I'm also really interested in the underrated as well. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit about that shortly as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think in the older, in the older gen, who was my favorite. I loved, um, um, Burns. Um, he coaches now. Shannon. Oh, Shannon Burns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, we, we keep. I promise people watching, listening, this is not some sort of scripted thing. I'm not just getting her to drop names, but obviously Shannon Burns on the show fairly recently as well. So. Yeah, loved loved him. I love all the little tackers. Um, who else have we got? Um, I'm not sure. I, I reckon. 
I've got their faces in my head. It just takes a little while to come to the. the so I guess we're brain. talking the small guys. We're talking again, like Maddie Stokes, yeah, Shannon Burns. Yes, yeah, Stokesy. Yeah, yeah, I love Stokesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, you know, chap, those sorts. Yep, actually, bald head. Yep, chappy. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. A, he was a good player until he went to Essendon. Whatever. Well. I don't think he wanted to, so let's. No, <laughs> we'll, uh, you know. maybe, maybe I'll get. Maybe I'll be lucky enough to ask him that one day. I know he's only living about twenty minutes up the road from me, so I've just got to find a way yeah. to get him on board. Fantastic player. Yeah, oh, absolute legend. Um, so I guess bouncing off even your answer there, and this, I'll be curious to see whether you have the same answer or not. You've just said you know Gary Junior, the greatest cat of all time. <laughs> but if you had a schoolyard pick and you were choosing between junior and senior, first person you know to be picked on your team. Are you going to go with you know one of the greatest midfielders of all time, or are you going to go with, or arguably the greatest midfielder of all time, or arguably the greatest forward of all time? You're going to go junior or senior? Oh, look, I I haven't seen enough of seniors. Um, yeah, I I, I haven't you see watched the highlights. Enough. You see the goal. Yeah, tally. and my dad had like a big um, I think it was like a big poster of him, like on a yeah. hard of that real big mark he took. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, sideways and didn't. Yeah, yeah. I'd argue yeah. He didn't actually mark it in the end, but. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was that one. Um, yeah, no. Um, I'd probably still like say, I'd probably say junior, just because the only way for the ball to get down there is to have a good Through midfield, mid. and he um, would hit the scoreboard too. So, um, yeah. Not totally fair. Um, you you were just talking about kind of underrated players. Now, obviously, you you get to have started kind of training with the girls and those, but you've obviously, as you said before, been watching some of the footage and taking a bit of a look at what, what the, what the girls have been doing um, in, in recent seasons. Is there anyone that you would say cats fans need to keep a real, besides yourself, of course, yeah. need to be keeping a close eye on going into this season. You just think they look like they're ready to take that next step. And of course, haven't had the opportunity to train alongside them yet. But so just purely from observation, who do you think's ready to, make a big stride forward from what you can tell. Yeah. Um, Cause there's a lot of talented, I think just from playing her previously, I think a lot of people didn't maybe this season, cause she plays more of a, like a, a role that is a bit sacrificial a little bit, but yep. um, Bowie, Michaela Bowen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, she's still obviously Gun. did great, but I think yeah. if you can get the ball in her, in the, her hands a lot more, um, and a lot of her run and carry, like she just opened up the game. So I think her over the next few seasons, she'll really come a lot. No, that's damn good call. Yeah. I, I, oh, am I right? What do you reckon? Well, I mean, I, I certainly think pretty highly of the way she plays the game. So mm. I'm certainly keen to see more over the course of, mm. over the course of this coming season. I guess, I mean, yes, you've had your investments in Gold Coast and, and, and Port Adelaide, but obviously cat supporter at heart on mm. the men's side. Is there anyone that you feel like, we just need to be watching closely. I mean, obviously, with a few of the injuries that are going on at the moment, it's given a few of the younger guys yeah. an opportunity to come through as well. But is there anyone in particular that you've, you're have just thinking, okay, like they're ready to take off? Yeah, look, I, I'm i actually a little bit disappointed because I, I if, you, if I answered this question last year, you would have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now he's started to come a light this year and he's my favourite player. Um, Atkins, he's my favourite oh, player. Me. Again, yeah, he's my favourite player, and you know, and I, I loved it when it, they moved him to the the heart, he, into the back line. Yep, and it, he finally was getting games, which was awesome. And then now he's into the midfield, and now he's getting a lot more attention. But he's already he's already proved his worth. Like For he, sure. he's played so well this season, so he's not underrated anymore. Um, no, no, but um, still, absolutely, like it just continues to feel like he's finding oh. ways to improve himself over and over and. That's despite a, a fascinating journey where, you know, he's got picked up from through the VFL pathway there mm. and, and has really had to earn it, um, but is is absolutely dominating and, and kind of show, when, whenever, even in this earliest stage of the season mm. when things weren't flying, when the club needed a lift, he was he was always right there. So, Yeah, for sure. And I've also obviously got a bit of a soft, um, a bit soft for um, Bo's. Because he's lovely. Oh, yeah. Gold Coast, Gold Coast, he's Gold Coast boy. Yeah, yeah. So he'll yeah. be one of the, one of the first you get in touch with, I assume, when when the time comes. Look, I don't know him like ridiculously. I've run into him a fair few times, but he's just a lovely. He's just lovely. Good. So, and I'm, it's nice to see him being successful. No, that's that's awesome. And so, how are you? Fi- I mean, preseason hasn't begun, but uh, how far do you think the Cats can go in in 2023? And I mean, men's and women's. Oh, I think I think men's. I reckon they'll be in the grand grand final again. They can keep if everyone can stay healthy. I reckon, 
grand final again. I reckon with us, definitely finals. I'd be disappointed if we didn't play finals. Yep. Um, yep. And, yeah, I mean, it'd be great to get to the – it'd be nice just to make finals for me and I, I'd like dead. to win some games. That'd be nice. Um, But, yeah, no, I, look, I don't like to put a limit on it at all. Like, who knows? You know, if you don't reach for the stars, then you never get there. So, but I, I would say Very that – They'd be aiming, the coaches' staff would be aiming to make finals um, again, but then looking at trying to beat those top teams. That's the thing is, is it was like last year they were beating teams that, they you know, be. were below them. Yeah, but then were losing to teams and not being able to put, you know, scoreboard pressure on those, you know, the likes of Adelaide and... Um, Brisbane and... Yeah, and it look, obviously it also depends on draws and stuff like that because it's a little bit different in our league, but... Um, yeah, I, I would be definitely saying finals and the team's ve- still very underrated and I think we're going to hit them pretty hard. I'm very excited. You're happy to remain in that kind of underrated category for a while? Yeah, Just man, I love the underdog under the radar and, and yeah, all of a sudden sure. everyone realises, holy shit, the Cats are you know top four and flying. Well, no one really, like, what it seems to me, like, no one really bothers about Geelong because it's just not in Melbourne. So yeah. it's kind of like you're, you're out to the sides. It's almost like being Gold Coast, but, like, in a town that actually cares about cares AFL. About the game. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. But um, I'm just excited to put on the uh, the hoops, which, interesting, never heard of the hoops saying. Like, I don't think that was going around when I was uh, really younger. Only, I feel like only really recent years have people started to mm. kind of embrace that sort of thing. Now, Ben was quick to jump on that himself and try and lock that one down for on, on, on yeah. the YouTube side and absolutely all credit to him. But um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's really only been a thing in the last few years where people have started to use that and directly mm. reference the cats. Yeah, I but felt a bit out of it. It really it, works. It 100% are, because they are hoops. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks good. As you said, the blue and white works with anything, so. Oh, fantastic. Um, like I said before, welcome to welcome to the cats. Welcome to, um, well, soon to say welcome back to, welcome back to Victoria and... And uh, it's, it's going to be fantastic to have you on board this season. Looking forward to seeing that game tally continue to clock up. We're closing in on 50 games for you now at this yes. stage. So, I mean, that's a milestone that's not too far away at this point. So that'll, that'll be an exciting one, I'm sure. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. If we can make finals, I might I may hit it. It depends on where we're looking at in the games played. So it depends on how many games we play. I mean, I'd love to play 12, but I'm thinking it's more, it's more still at 10. So yeah. if we make it to the grand final, I'll hit it. Which, I mean, for for a multitude of reasons, let's hope that, uh, including obviously your fifty game milestone, let's let's hope that uh, it'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Milestone game in a grand final. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I mean, that was was that yeah, Zach Tui last year? I think his two hundredth was no. Yeah, there was a milestone. I think in the grand final. I can't. I can't. Maybe it That's wasn't Zach cool. Tui, but there was there was someone playing a milestone in the grand final, and so just adds that little bit extra for the for the individual. So hopefully for you, that will be that Very will be the cool. case, and. And then hopefully the the, te- uh, the team can bring it home for you that day. Yeah, for sure. But but thank you so much for, for coming on the show and, and sharing this love of the game and, and that history through Gold Coast, Port Adelaide, and now on to the Cats. It's, it's really been awesome to have you on and, and looking forward to watching on as the season plays out. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's, it's been fantastic. Cats fans, if you haven't already done so, please make sure to subscribe to The Hoop Show on YouTube, Behind the Play on podcast feeds, Give them you know, positive reviews, like it on YouTube, five stars on podcast feeds. It helps with all you know, growing that exposure. We'd really, really appreciate it. And Kate, once, uh, one final time, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing this journey so far. Thank you. Can't wait to see you out there in, in a few weeks in the, on the training track. And then, of course, come the, the pre-finals by uh, when, on the men's side when, when the, the women's season kicks off. And hopefully we'll be there round one and continuing to build that streak and, and banking a few wins. Yeah, thank thank you so much. Cats fans, stay along strong. We'll see you next week. Fly away. Fly home.